Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. I thought that we could have a discussion about the voice acting of Zelda in Breath of the Wild. No! By now, most people have realised that this is the first time that the Legend of Zelda franchise has used voice acting. Given that this series is so near and dear to people's hearts, I think it's more important than ever to constructively criticise the things that they did well and not so well with the voices in this game. It's also important to do this because if Nintendo intend to implement voice acting again, I want them to do it even better. Before we jump in, let me preface this video by saying the following opinions are my own. My goal is to open a discussion, not a fanboy war. If you are not very far into the main story, then I suggest that you turn off now. If you find me overly critical, then please feel free to comment down below, but just know that my intentions are good. If you hadn't worked it out by now, I am of course a British, so I know my own accent very, very well. And this is where our first problem lies. The voice actor for Zelda is Patricia Somerset. Now, Patricia is a American, but they gave Zelda received pronunciation which can basically be described as upper class educated English. You can think of it as close to the accent that you might expect of the royal family. The reason I say that this is the first problem is because you have an American trying to speak in an upper class English way. As a native of the UK, I can tell you right now that Patricia's efforts were very good, but as a native, it was quite clear to me that this accent was not natural. It was a great effort, but it didn't quite hit the mark. Hero of Hyrule, chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. You have shown unflinching bravery and skill in the face of darkness and adversity. For me, the accent itself hit a few too many cliches and it begs the question, if they wanted an English voice, why didn't they just get someone from the UK? If you do that, then you have the authenticity. In my eyes, when you're not speaking in your own voice and you are being asked to inject extra elements into your performance, such as emotion in a second voice, it becomes much, much harder to do. I'm not a child anymore. I may not be much use on the battlefield, but there must, there must be something I can do to help. I took some time to watch as many Patricia Somerset interviews as I could to learn more about her and it turns out that she did indeed spend years studying in the UK. But another thing that I learned regarding the performance, she was very very vague when it came to the point of voice direction. Rarely at any point in any of her interviews did she talk about actually receiving quality direction. In my opinion, one of the biggest challenges that Patricia faced was to focus on accuracy and consistency before emotion. When you're constantly having to think about the voice you're producing, you run the risk of losing certain crucial elements when it comes to expressing emotion. To put this into perspective, up to this point in my life, I have never heard a person from the UK do a convincing American accent. I'm sure if you're from the US and you've ever seen or heard a British person doing an American accent, you knew they were not from the US. I just think that when you have a character who is more human-like than creature, it's easier to nitpick. Let's jump in and look at some of the details using the hidden memories as source material. Memory 1, Subdued Ceremony, and it's not a good start for Zelda. The player is presented with a princess who is just going through the motions of her responsibilities. She's bored, cold and indifferent, all with a very thin voice. Now perhaps the scene will require this of her, but not a strong start. Hero of Hyrule, chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. You have shown unflinching bravery and skill in the face of darkness and adversity and have proven yourself worthy of the blessings of the goddess Hylia. In Memory 5, Zelda's Resentment, she comes across as much more personable, and I also noticed there was a slightly different tone in the voice this time. She actually had some genuine personality, she even came across as bitchy, which is absolutely fine because it shows attitude, it shows strength, and I actually found that in that memory there was some genuine emotion. I thought I made it clear that I'm not in need of an escort. It seems I'm the only one with a mind of my own. Once again, in Memory 6, Urbosa's Han, I do believe that Patricia did a good job in conveying genuine, believable emotion. Urbosa! What was that? Did you feel that? Wait, what? How did you... What are you doing here? <laughs> What's so funny?
Moving on to memory seven, Blades of the Yiga. Of course, voice acting is not only the words you say, but the noises you make. And in this clip, I do think that Patricia did a good job of just creating action noises. <laughs> Memory A, a premonition. The standout thing for me in this memory was Zelda's tone of voice. It was clearly lower than some of the other memories. That cut doesn't look too bad, actually. You're fine for now. But you know, there's a fine line between courage and recklessness. As brave as you are, that does not make you immortal. For me, bringing Zelda's voice down a semitone across the board would have improved the experience so much. Memory 9, Silent Princess. Here we see a bit of inconsistency. We have just jumped from a lower toned Memory 8 and now we are high again. Of course changing your tone is perfectly reasonable, but it comes across as literally a different voice to me when we compare the two. The flowers we have in Hyrule aren't just beautiful, they're also quite useful as ingredients for a variety of things. For some reason with this clip, and it's probably because Zelda is nerding out with Link, it really reminded me of uh, Hermione from Harry Potter. Ta-da! Research from the castle shows ingesting one of these can actually augment certain abilities. We wouldn't be in a controlled environment out here, but with your level of physical fitness, you'd be a perfect candidate for the study. Memory 11, Shelter from the Storm. Here, I did find that there was a good amount of emotion shown. What if... One day, you realized that you just weren't meant to be a fighter. Yet the only thing people ever said was that you were born into a family of the royal guard, and so no matter what you thought, you had to become a knight. Memory 12, father and daughter. From here on out, things really do go downhill. I found the performance here extremely weak and lacking any gravitas. Whenever it came time to step up and really punch through with that heavy drama, Patricia Zelda just always came up short for me. I'm doing everything I can. I'll have you know that I just recently returned from the Spring of Courage, where I offered every ounce of my prayers to the goddess. Don't you see? There's nothing more I can do! Memory 13, slumbering power. Once again, I found this extremely weak. Curse you. I've spent every day of my life dedicated to praying. I've pleaded to the spirits tied to the ancient gods. And still the holy powers have proven deaf to my devotion. Memory 14 to Mount Laneru. For me, this scene absolutely falls flat on its face. Zelda's attempts to come across as kind of kind, personable, funny, it just doesn't work at all in my opinion. It comes across as quite fake, forced and unnatural. At first, I wasn't sure if I should outfit him with all of the royal gear. I thought maybe he should have to earn it first. But it works. He wears it like a true natural. Memory 15, Return of Calamity Ganon. Zelda is offered another opportunity to really hit home her strength, her resilience, her determination, but she gives us nothing. The single tone, overly pronounced, lacking punch voice is just not cutting it. No. I'm not a child anymore. I may not be much use on the battlefield, but there must, there must be something I can do to help. Memory 16, Despair. Up to this point, Zelda has shown us that she basically has one tone and lacks intonation. She consistently has a soft, breathy voice. Now, in this context, it was perfect. When it's time to come across as soft, weak, vulnerable, broken, and desperate, that style of delivery works. How did it come to this? The divine beasts, the guardians, they've all turned against us. And everyone, Mipha, Rebosa, Rivali and Daruk, they're all trapped inside those things. So I really am just a failure. All my friends, the entire kingdom, my father most of all. I tried and I failed. For me, Memory 17, Zelda's Awakening, is pretty much the only memory which has both good and bad parts for me, where I liked parts of the performance and disliked other parts. Link, save yourself! Go! I'll be fine! Don't worry about me! Run! 
Run! Finishing on memory 18, the Master Sword Zelda is presented with an opportunity to just talk and use her soft, breathy voice. In this context, in the final memory, it works. Please trust me when I say that I know he will arrive before you yet again. So there you go people, my breakdown of the voice acting for Princess Zelda. Please feel free to agree or disagree, but keep it constructive. Don't get me wrong, Patricia seems like a wonderful person and she did a good job, but not a great job in my personal opinion. Do I think she's capable of presenting a Princess Zelda that I would like to listen to? Yes, I do. However, if Miss Somerset gets this role again, I really need to see her take it to the next level when it's required. You may have noticed that I didn't include every single memory, but I did include most of them and definitely the ones I wanted to talk about. On the flip side, if I had to try and find holes in my own argument, then perhaps I would look at it in a way that Patricia was playing a girl who is a teenager. Now this girl has been belittled and undermined her whole life. She does not have a guiding figure in a mother and her father, the king, doesn't care. In that sense, you're dealing with a child without a mother who has the responsibility of the world on her shoulders. People in those situations can go one of two ways. They can either grow or they can crumble. It seems to me that Zelda did a mixture of both. In terms of character design and setting, I thought they were incredible. And don't get me wrong, I do love this game. So now, one of the big questions, what's gonna be next for the future of Zelda? In my opinion, now that they have given the fans voice acting, they have to continue in that vein. Next time, what I need to see from Nintendo is a 100% commitment to voice acting. In Breath of the Wild, they didn't really go for it. It was a very strange mishmash of 20% voice acting, 80% text, and it didn't really sit well together in any way. In this situation, you should go big or you should go home. And Nintendo, they kind of left the house but forgot the keys inside. So there you go, people, my detailed breakdown of Zelda's voice acting in Breath of the Wild. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments down below. I have been The Complaining Gamer. Thank you very much, and I will catch you next time.